Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. It's brought to you by Bet365. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. Adam Kaplan's here. Nothing's ever ordinary about the Philadelphia Eagles. Their seasons always are filled with drama, whether they're 14-3 and three or 3-14. Three and 14. It's always something. Let's get Adam Kaplan's take on the Eagles-Saints, the situation moving forward here as he joins us for another edition of Football at Four on the Sports Bass Live on 97.3 ESPN. Welcome back, Adam. What's up, buddy? Yeah, Mike, it's, it's uh, as someone pointed out on uh, X, take the team that I, of the opposite that I pick. So uh, <laughs> 0-3, Mike. It, it's funny. It, I'm laughing because I've won our – pretty certain I've won our last three or four years I've picked – the best out of whoever's been on a pregame show. But this year, man, I'm a mush. Like, you pick uh, the opposite of, of who I pick. So, yeah, I was kind of like everyone, Mike, but on the, you have to base it on what you've seen, right? Now, but there is a the, – the play in the NFL, uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're wagering or you just have to pick games straight up, is if a you know, good team has a really bad loss and they play a team in next, uh, uh, next week who, who had a blowout win, a lot, there's, a, there's a trend of the – Team that's on the road upsetting that that game. Now, maybe that's why the Saints are only a three point favorite after what had happened to the Eagles and how the Saints have been playing. But that was one of the most remarkable games I've seen. I mean, it, they, you could you could certainly make the case they should have lost the block punt. We'll get into some of Sirianni's calls, which you know I'll give a little bit more context as I've talked to some coaches around the league about it, who I've been texting with. Just to, we were just talking about some of the things that happened around the NFL. And, and I'll give you some context uh, over the years of which I've gotten on situations like that. But, um, look, you, you look at how shorthanded they were, Mike, but I have not seen a defense take over like that. That, that to me, with the, of course, Barkley will talk about, but the story of the game to me is how the defense responded after really to an embarrassing performance against Atlanta. Could never have seen that, Mike. It was just remarkable how well they played. Yeah, I mean, we can get into that, of course, uh, with Adam, but, uh, you know, I want to get your thoughts on, I love the Barkley signing, and my, my reasoning was, look, you pay a guy that kind of money, it's to feature. It's to you, it, you're going to make an offense, and this guy's going to be, he has dominated the offense. for Now, I know A.J. Brown not there, you know, the last game, and, and he gets hurt, but Barkley dominates this game, and they I like the way that they are really saying, I feel like Barkley has given their run game some sort of identity that they didn't have before. Mike, and also... It's the explosive plays. Miles Sanders, by the way, Miles Sanders was pretty good for them a couple years ago. Yep. But nothing like this. He does. Miles. It's weird. Miles had a bunch of like he led the NFL one year, and I think like runs for over like twenty yards. But it's kind of misleading. You have to go through the tape and look at it. But nevertheless, Miles Sanders cannot do what what Saquon Barkley can do. Uh, there's there's no question about it. And one of the things we're going to talk to Greg Cosell tonight. Uh, we have a we've got uh, our our Patreon members get a chance to ask questions, and I, what I always do is whatever they don't ask, I ask. And I, I I'm just this, the big knock, Mike, on Barkley. You probably don't know this, but this is from a league standpoint. Is he ne- he was never really been a good second level runner? Like okay, if the hole's not if the hole's not defined for him, he's just not going to hit it. He's had a couple runs here where, like, wow, I've not seen that before from him. And I, I, I look, you could say all you want about how great the Eagles' offensive line has been. It's been terrific, Mike. And and I mean, it's unbelievable how well the right side did after the after the bat, the, the the two starters go out and the backups come in and play really well. But Barkley's done some different things here, which we've not really seen from him. And it's it's pretty interesting. And now you you, you talk about his contract before we move on. I do want to mention this. So former president, Eagles president Joe Banner and I talked before the season started. We, so I said to Joe, I, I, I said, listen, I get it. Barkley is going to be a, uh, Barkley will do better because he's going to have a better offensive line. But with his injury history, why not invest it? Invest less money and just find another back because you know the back whoever they get is going to do well. I mean, John Dre Swift had a great year uh, in back of that line, right? The Eagles made an offer, but it was it, 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 it did not equal even close to what Chicago offered them. But why commit? Why commit twelve and a half a year? They can't get out of the contract until twenty twenty six. The first two years are fully guaranteed. I mean, what, why give them twenty five over two? 
Actually, it's 26 over two, 26.5 million over two. You know, why do that? Joe's like, look, th- it's going to turn out to be a bargain if he gets stays healthy. And of course, I said if. He he said if, and and I, I look, I, I see what Joe's talking about. It's um, it's pretty remarkable, and and look, he's Saquon is a game changer, and a demoralize, uh, he demoralizes a defense when he has those big plays, Mike. That it's it's pretty significant, and, and he he has shown also, Mike, to to take on a rushing load. The, the rushing load's been a little bit bigger than I expected, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, I, and and some of that could be because of the injury issues at wide receiver. Is that changing the game plan, and, and are they having to use Barkley more? Was this their intention? It's a great question. You know, In my notes to you, I put kind of the injury issues at receiver really changed the game plan because what they did, uh, I, I don't have the exact number of, of 13 personnel, which is one receiver, one back, and three tight ends, but they did it a little bit, and Jack Stoll, by the way, was now signed off the – he was actually signed him off their practice squad, so he's now on the roster. It'll be he's no longer on the practice squad. So I think Mike, they did what they had to do. I, I give Kellen Moore credit; he, he he did a great job. Boy, he's done a really nice job. But the, the thing we're not seeing enough of—it's my one pet peeve with Kellen Moore, and, and I actually brought this up we, um, really after week two. I want to see the backs not just on checkdowns. I want to see them used on, on design plays. We're not we're not seeing that. Uh, well, Shipley's not been the last two games has not played on offense, so I don't quite understand that. So, they, and Mike, they're going to need to make up for this without. It, you know, we don't know about AJ Brown yet. It he certainly will not play if he doesn't practice. So, they're, look, they're they're on they're on a regular week here. You know, they have the week five bye. Let's let's take a look late in the week to see if AJ Brown could get on the field, and then we'll also see if um, Devontae Smith could get cleared by Friday. He also cannot play without getting cleared. So, he, I mean, he, he's got to practice. He's got to get on the practice field. But you notice that they have not done anything in receiver yet. They did something at tight end. I thought that was interesting. Uh, Paris Campbell, by the way, is back now on the practice squad. He, they, they have another activation if they want to, or they could sign him off of it. But they're going to have to. They're going to have to sort of Jimmy rig this thing, Mike. Uh, they're going to have to change it up because it, again, if they're dead, they only have three healthy receivers right now. Covey was put on IR today, yep. so they're going to they're going to have to change things up here. They're, John they're, Ross, they're gonna, by the way, to the practice squad. Yeah, yeah, and then John Ross did not have a great training camp. That's why he never. In fact, think about it, Mike. He was not even on the practice squad. I, I was kind of disappointed with John Ross. I thought we were going to see. Look, he's healthy, no question. He was healthy. Uh, I, I just didn't see the juice that he used to have, Mike. I'm not saying he can't run anymore, but we didn't see that. But you, just to give an example of why they brought him back and maybe someone else. The, Bring in a veteran. Kellen Moore does not write traditional offense. It's not. It's 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 not a West Coast offense. It's sort of a melding, and the language is different from what the Eagles have had before in terms of terminology. It's hard to bring somebody else in here, Mike. Now that doesn't know the offense, it's hard to do that. I'm sure people are probably wondering about that. That's my understanding uh, of what's going on here. But it doesn't mean they can't sign a receiver and get the guy up to speed. Now. Right now, going forward here at receiver, it's Jahan Dotson, who clearly will be starting this week. It just depends on um, what personnel grouping they're going to have. And then Johnny Wilson's going to have to play more. Uh, he, he just has trouble getting open on his own. He's more of a blocking receiver, which is, which is interesting. So, and then they're, they're, they're going to have to get through. Uh, Paris Campbell's obviously going to have to be up this week, whether they sign him off of it or use use an elevation, I mean, they're going to have to figure this out. Now, on the practice squad, they have Kyle Phillips, who I'm told with Tennessee was mainly a, a slot receiver. Danny Gray, formerly of the Niners, yet another former third-round pick of the Niners who the Eagles have brought in here. And then I expect them to add one or two more uh, on the practice squad going forward. They don't have a choice. They have to. Uh, that's got to come here. So you remember, Nia Smith is, is on, on uh, IR with a destination for return at some point, but there's no time frame on him. Right now to, to to return, so they've Mike. They're in trouble with receiver in terms of depth. They they just don't have it right now. They're going to have to do something soon. Adam Kaplan, football at four from the Inside the Birds podcast. Let's uh, flip over to um, uh, the defense uh, and the game plan that we saw from Vic Fangio, who spoke today. Obviously, uh, yep. and the team. I mean, really, a lot of it is Jalen Carter just absolutely wrecked the game. It looked like it was, and I can't wait to talk to Greg Cosell because Greg loves it. When like, I remember when he 
told us last year when Jordan Davis, people forget about this because it's been so negative, and we'll get to Davis in a second in terms of this game, but I remember Cosell telling us, on our, he goes, hey, you got to put it in your pregame notes. We must talk about Jordan Davis, how, really, how he's really dominating to a certain extent. Well, let's talk about Jalen Carter. He's the most talented player they have on their team other than A.J. Brown. I mean, he is unbelievably gifted. He just didn't always bring it. He did not play well at all against Atlanta. He, he was a home wrecker. He just I, – I, I think what happens, Mike, to, and it's not just Jalen Carter was terrific, but when you play so poorly against Atlanta, yet they only lost by one, but no pass rush, which, they, by the way, their edge rushers still don't have a, a sack, which is kind of comical, but – they got plenty of pressure. That was not the sacks again or individual plays or one individual play. Pressures are more important if you talk to coaches. It's not like you're going to get 20 sacks in a game, right? But you might get 15 to 20 pressures, which makes the quarterback move or get rid of the football before he wants to. Jalen Carter is absolutely unbelievable. Penetration to the backfield at the quarterback. Quarterbacks hate it, Mike, when they can't step up in the pocket. It, 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 and. And boy, did you see Derek Carr become captain checkdown? He just became he became frustrated. That's Derek Carr that has frustrated me evaluating his career, Mike. And talking to people who work with him over the years, he doesn't want to run anymore. He hasn't run for years. He just for yet yeah, he's a good athlete. But Jalen Carter, number ninety eight, was a man in this game. Not only is he in terms of one game grading out better than any player they've had so far this season. I, I, I don't know what more you can ask of him. I'm glad he got the, the message from Clint Hurt uh, and, and Vic Fangio when they watched the tape. Whatever the message was, he got it. Milton Williams did well. J- Jordan Davis had a good game. Now, I don't know I don't know it, how consistent he was in the game. It wasn't just the sack, which was incredible, by the way. I've been barreling down on Carr. Carr seemed like <laughs> – you see, you saw Carr saw him barreling down. He just – he folded. You know, that was pretty amazing. But Carter, Carter didn't play as high as he had. What, you know, when he stands up, he gets stood up, and it's very easy to move him, Mike. That didn't happen in this game. Uh, Adam, uh, you take a look at, um, you know, moving forward with this defense. You wonder if it's uh, a one-week thing, sustainable. Um, you know, mm-hmm. obviously McCoy went out for the Saints. I think that changed a lot yep, there. Did. Or did we see enough that we like where this inj- this defense uh, is kind of going? And we know the problems with the pass rush. Um, do we think the defense is sustainable, what we saw on Sunday? a great question. It is to this degree. The effort had to be better than it was the, the previous week against Atlanta for the D tackles. Okay, we're talking about. Remember, they they run an odd man front. So, it, Clint Hurts group, they had to play better. And you know, Moro Jomo's giving. We, I just want to mention Moro Jomo and uh, Thomas Booker, who've been a nice surprise. I know they don't play a lot. And their hope is that they don't have to play on it, obviously, that the coaches are, because it's got to be Davis, Carter, and Williams in the three-man front with the two overhangs. But it's um, – I was just blown away. You know what I think, Mike? I, I, I believe that these guys are so pissed off about the way that they played the week before. They're, they're so prideful. I know they're young. But remember where they played at University of Georgia? We're talking about Carter and Davis. The, the, these are guys who won a national championship. They they just had to they had to get get it going and uh, now it's sustainable. They're never they're they're just it's now now Carter. I've said this about Carter. Carter be as, could be as good as he wants. I'm not talking about Aaron Donald, but a step below that. That's how gifted this kid is. We we forget we know about the off the field stuff. That's why he dropped. He would have gone number two by the way to the Cardinals. Had the Cardinals passed him on the character, but Carter is is a stud talent and Mike he brought it. It was. I and not just them. Zach Bond, Nicobe Dean, by the way, Dean played well. Bond was a man again, like week one. It is sustainable, Mike. But to that level to do it every week, obviously not. It's impossible. But how about a step below? But that, yes, it absolutely is. All right, Adam. Uh, let's take a look at the decisions from one Nick Sirianni. <laughs> uh, you heard, might have heard this was a big story over uh, yeah, the last forty-eight you. hours thank here. You talk radio. <laughs> um, I, you know, talking to former players, you know. They seem to be like, hey, we like our coach to be aggressive. You know, I followed up and saying, hey, does that bring uh, questions in the locker room? And they say, sure. yeah, if you're a weak-minded player, but if you're a, a you're a guy who has convictions in your talent, you like the coach showing confidence in you. On the flip side, you look at New Orleans. I mean, I thought they lost the game in large part because they had no confidence in the player. I mean, they c- coached the game scared. 
Sirianni's decision making is certainly being called out the last two weeks. What are you hearing about that? Yeah, I didn't have a problem with it uh, against Atlanta like everyone else did, but this week, Mike, here, here's the thing. On a fourth and three, right? You, you got to you. So, so this is the way that uh, a couple coaches I was texting with um, earlier today. We were just talking about it, and you know they they don't know Sirianni, that so they can't really. They, they know Philly's very analytical. The, the the data, all the data gives you is percentage. That's all it tells you. You don't have to. You, you always use it in terms of okay, this is what the percentages tell me. You know, if it's like fifty three forty seven, do whatever you want to do. You could. But you have to go, it's situational. How's your defense playing? Mike, the defense really can I mean, obviously, it's kind of like the Green Bay game, but you times three, the defense won, kind of won the game for them to a certain extent. You have to look at, do you trust your defense? If you trust your defense, you kick the field goal. If you don't, you could go for it, you could, you could do some other things. But I just think that Nick's got to take a look at it and go do it. You know, it's one thing if the game was 13 to nothing, you go, hey, man, we got to get points here. Three is not what we want. We want six. Okay, let's get, extend the drive. Go for it. Now, the one that I don't I, at 60 yard field goal is such a low percentage. I get that Elliott's got a great leg, and it is also indoors. We have, to, we have to mention that. It's just not something I would do. But how about what's comical is uh, the, the kicker for Aubrey hit a 65 yard. <laughs> Which is funny for Dallas, they st- still lost. But it, th- that one, I, 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 I wouldn't have done it. Um, I'm not. I don't have the venom for Nick Sirianni that the fans do. Now, I also tell you, there's some coaches around the league that don't like Nick's body language. I know there's a national view of Nick that's not great. Uh, I know a couple coaches I'm pretty f- close with who they don't. Again, to make it clear, they don't know him. They've seen video of Nick. The Kansas City thing was brought up to me in, the, in that. When you say body language, are you talking about, like, uh, arrogance or, like, that he doesn't have confidence in himself? No, not the con- they wouldn't know the confidence in himself. Okay, that's what no. But when people yeah, look at body language and try to read it and say, ah, he looks yeah. like uh, he's not confident or he's, you know. No, nothing like that. No, it's, it, this goes back a couple of years, just the way that he handles himself. Um, they think he's really cocky and uh, – d- I guess, boy, it's been circulated with the coaches. I, don't, I guess a, a lot of coaches are on social media, of course, they're under a fake name. They don't use their name usually, but they see it. And both of the coaches that I spoke with uh, today actually mentioned that. that uh, you remember the tunnel a couple years ago against Kansas yeah, City? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, <that's>, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, 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 I didn't think it was a big deal, but apparently I'm not a coach, so I'd, uh I, I don't know. I, I, I'm sort of a Sirianni defender. I guess I'm, I'm limited, although I don't. I, I I don't have a problem going with most of the time. I, I really disagree with them going for it when they've done it because I know analytically what the, the numbers tell you. Uh, I, I had a fight, I had actually an argument with a former Eagles coach uh, many years ago <laughs> during the '17 season when I think it was a Giants game when they went for uh, um, it wasn't it wasn't the Jake Elliott field goal something else. Uh, but I don't again I don't have access to their percentages. Uh, and it also it's situational. As coaches always tell me, Mike, it's it's really where are we at in the game, Mike, and we have to remember that. All right, Adam Kaplan, a couple more quickies with Adam here is uh, football at four here on the Sports Bash Live on ninety seven three ESPN. You know, we touched on obviously the decision making, uh, Barkley, some injuries there, um, the injuries moving forward though. Uh, what are we looking at potentially? You know, with uh, Lane Johnson possibly out yeah. with. Um, uh, uh, Mackay Becton possibly out. You, you would imagine that they're going to go with the same two guys there. Devontae Smith possibly out. A.J. Brown possibly out. Britton Covey possibly out. Well, Covey's out. Covey's out. He's on IR. So Yeah, Covey broken shoulder. He's out at least you know, yeah, yeah, for a while. Yeah, yeah, that, that'll be six. That's a six to, that's at least six weeks. So um, with Lane, here's the thing. He's got a concussion history. The league's told me over the years the Length to return to play for concussions is actually longer. It's now six to six, it's six and a half to eight days. So, which means I'm putting him at best very questionable. And, and now he's got this injury, this, this history. And remember, he was throwing up. They, they, uh, fought, whoever did it was it Fox? Was it Pam Oliver? Um, I think whoever did the game Sunday for uh, the, the sideline reporter it was Pam Oliver. That he was throwing up. So, whoever it was said it. He, he threw up. So he he wasn't feeling well. That's not good. 
Remember Darian Kennard, by the way. Darian Kennard, who was the, one of the backup right tackles in training camp, he is not dressed. And we know it's Fred Johnson who filled in, but did a really good job. So did Tyler Steen. I, that was a stunner for me. And, and they, they, run, they ran stunts at those guys, which you should do. And they held up, Mike. They did a good job. And I also, let's give Hurts credit for, for, for I, I know he had the two turnovers, the fumble, awful. You, that can't happen, the pick. That's debatable whether it's on him. But um, I thought Jalen held up really well. We're go- again, we're going to talk to Greg Cosell tonight, so I want to get Greg's thoughts on on uh, on uh, Jalen. So, but I thought he did a much better job this game. And he, he hung in there. He didn't bail. You know, I've been on him about bailing for two for two years. He's really had this bad habit, Mike, of rolling to his right without pressure, which is which is, which is by the way very coachable. But the guy's got to do his job the right way. I thought Jalen really hung in there for the most part. Did a good job. All right, uh, we've got uh, plenty more this week as they get ready for the Blitz Happy. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They've had problems with Tampa. The Blitz has been bothering them. Todd Bowles has bothered them. We'll break that down on Friday's edition of Football at Four with Adam Kaplan. Mosher tomorrow. Andrew on Thursday. And, of course, you can check out the Inside the Birds podcast wherever you get your podcast. And don't forget all of their content on the YouTube channel. Just search Inside the Birds. Adam Kaplan here on a Football at Four Tuesday. Thanks, Adam. Thank you.